Uh, let's put one that's nice on the eyes, Riverside Space, and let's listen to the Linnae theme, now that we were talking about it. Nightwalker, so sick. Can they beat my Linnae plus Mika team? That's the real question. Well, after this, you won't be um, a Linnae Mika player, because you will have seen the light. Uh, okay, let's see what this is set up on. What was I doing last? I was probably... Oh, controller, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, that's right. We were at a tournament, so someone was using it. Uh, okay, block everything. Okay, so Ruby Point. The goal is to get them to block Grim Reaper, usually by neutral jumping. You can neutral jump, and you have so many ways to control your movement because her run speed, like running no jump, look how much ground that covers. And you can cancel the momentum. It's so good. Cancel the momentum with back jump whenever you want. There's just, Ruby's movement gives them no way to predict where you're going. And that especially makes cross-up Grim Reaper a thing. Like, they don't know what the hell's going on. So your goal is to do that. So why else is the air good? Because obviously Ruby's normals are the god. Did they get nerfed? Yes. Does it matter? Hell no. You being in the air is such a threat to the entire cast that they're usually not going to try to go up there to challenge you. And that makes making them block Ruby ass or a guard assist extremely free. So what happens once we make them block it? Obviously we're going to activate. And... Is that on infinite? Oh, yeah, it's on infinite. Okay, so the main things that you're gonna do... Well, usually you're just gonna immediately Death Scythe again because there's pretty much nothing they can do about it. Like, if they reversal or super, you didn't do an action with Ruby, so you're gonna get to punish them for free. Um, so one of the common options I see is after the second Death Scythe, you come in and do that one. Very common. Get the cross up. Um, another good one is from full screen. Active switch. I don't know why it didn't come out on frame one. Let's try it again. There we go. That lets you get your 50-50 with Gord. We'll talk about Gord after. We want to cover one at a time first. So yeah, get the Death Scythe. Death Scythe again. Common option, get Gord in. And then, what's another one? Here we go. I did it a little too early. Gord was still in recovery. But I was going to do the cross-up. And then the third one, the one you'll see Jonah do a lot. Oops. Try it again. Is this one. Except he crosses up. I'm new to this. Yeah. So that's that, that sets up a sandwich. So you have options. You can either, especially if you're close to the wall, uh, send Gordo in for the 50-50 using the gun. Which is fully invincible once you switch, by the way, so you don't need to worry about super there. Um, of course, there's the greedy cross-up once you think they're respecting your mix-up, which you're never going to find online. So you probably only saw me do that once tonight, I think, because you have to have somebody who's going to try to block, not someone who's going to match. And uh, crossing up with the A version of Buzzsaw into the active switch, which sets up a sandwich situation, which is everything in the world that you want, of course. Now let's talk about Gordy. Gordy wants you to block that assist. Once he does, oops, meant to hold our one there. Oh, let's change this option. Once you block it, you're in trouble. So this is gonna be, without Ruby coming in, <laughs> this is gonna be a 50-50 situation. So the one that covers everything, like if they're not gonna block, if they wanna try to get out somehow, the one that's going to cover everything is this. You just Grim Reaper active switch and run in with Ruby. And it sets up a sandwich. Like, super good. Yeah, and you can keep switching back and forth using the same options as before. Like, as you switch from character to character, you just use their next option. Like, you can keep doing it, and it's always invincible. It doesn't matter. Should I push block in that situation? Uh, I wouldn't do it. Like, uh, tell me where you want to push block. Let's actually, let's just look at it, right? What what move do you want to push block? We'll set up the computer player to push block. Let me know when uh, the chat catches up to the stream delay. Oops. So the other option you want to do with Gord is the command throw. Uh, man, I was getting it every time online. Now I can't do it offline. There we go. 
and then switch back to Gord. Boom. 6.3k unrecoverable, and you get really good Oki. When they're both on Tommy? Yeah, don't. Because they are switching every time their point character inputs something. And so, like, I don't know, let's do the easy setup, right? In this situation, if you push block Ruby, she doesn't give a fuck. She's shooting you, and she's invincible, and I'm Gord in your face. Likewise, if you push block Grim Reaper, Gordo's still gonna just, like, be coming at you from far away, and I get to run in with Ruby. So it's just a waste of meter. Like, they always get to come in. There's no way out. That's why this is so fucking stupid and good. There's no way out. There's nothing you can do. Of course, the confirms are, like, piss easy. Like, you don't even have to practice. Because both of their combos are pretty much one button. I'm doing that way too early. Oh, man. Usually, they don't go over me like that. You can also just super, too, <laughs> if you need to kill. Oh, you're not supposed to do the 2B if you super, though. Just do it after the 5BB. Yeah, Gord Ruby is no fun allowed. You're not allowed to push block. Uh, and then, like, general stuff. Let's get him to not block. General stuff is, like, they are probably just going to get randomly hit by Grim Reaper a lot. Especially if you cross up. Oops, let's switch back to Ruby. And it's it's kind of a more difficult combo on the timing, but it's doable. I'm supposed to hold R1. But yeah, you can confirm it by just doing a second Grim Reaper, which is super cheap, right? Because you're go you're already gonna input that anyway. So even if you didn't hit confirm it, even if you didn't hit confirm it, you just get a combo. <laughs> it's so good. And if you want, you actually do, if you looked at my gauge, you have enough time to active switch to Ruby on that command through there if you want Ruby's pressure instead of Gordo's in the corner. Really probably matchup dependent, depending on who you're fighting character-wise and what options you want to cover with their stuff in the corner. But yeah, you always have time to active switch at the end of that confirm. Then there's uh, the other confirm, is they just take the gunshot. And it doesn't matter! Try it again. It's actually easier if you do the C version. You can do it with the B version though. I'm just bad. I don't know if you can continue that combo. You probably can. <laughs> Look at the damage. It's all non-recoverable. Can I do all this? No, nah, I can't get the command throw at the end. So you have to do probably just 5 BB. Omitting the air jump. Nah, you don't need to. You get like... Really, the, the moral of the story is to get the unrecoverable damage. That's like the most important thing. That one's harder to pick up, but I did it online earlier. Oh, closer, closer. Cause I'm greedy, I don't want to spend meter if I don't have to. Look at it, it's all unrecoverable. Yeah, you could just do 5 BB command throw. That's 6.5k unrecoverable. So, why is that important, you might ask? And that, I think, is a mechanic that mid-level players aren't thinking about when they're trying to find out why Ruby Gordo is so cheap. Get in a room, what are you talking about? When, when uh, mid-level players are trying to analyze why this is so cheap, if you do a normal combo... Oops. Look at the red life on Ruby. That is all recoverable health that once she switches back to Gordo to waste some time in the neutral game, she's going to be able to get that health back. But when you do a cross combo... Doesn't exist. 
The only red that she got was from that initial gunshot. And so it's more effective damage you want to think of, right? Because when you do, like, a ruby bread and butter worth 5k, it's really worth, like, 3.5k. Because the rest of the health effectively is recoverable. That's also why the DP assist nerf is a pretty big deal. Because now if you do DP assist, the entire combo is red health. So you can recover all of it. So as long as you play a team comp, such as Ruby Gordo, that controls the neutral, you can get your health back. But when you're fighting Ruby Gordo, it's so easy for them to just confirm into whatever they want. And they don't have to really think about it. As soon as they call their assist, they're going to get to mix you up. If they hit you at all, it's all about that effective damage. So much damage. So like eating a 6.6k combo, all non-recoverable, is the same as eating like an 8.5k optimized like Aurier confirm with assists. 